Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today on the west side of the map we've got the Malians being played by Salami in red and in the east side of the map we've got Divine playing in blue as the English. An interesting matchup on Dry Arabia. So I'm looking forward to this one. Malians being played a lot by Salami so I'm certain that he's going to be coming up with some cool strategies as we see the villager going out to build the pit mine there on the gold and start to build those houses. Now these houses will be giving the constant trickle of gold increased uh, per house that you have around that pit mine. And villagers coming out to food as well, looking to get that food laid soon. Three villagers on wood on the straggler tree, so an interesting opening here to the build order for Salami. We've seen a lot of trade happen with the Malians, but will we see the same today? Interesting guess the English civilization, it can be a bit tricky to go for things like trade. The English can be relatively aggressive early on, but they're very flexible civ in many ways as well. So. We shall see how Divine plays this one out. The English, of course, very strong in the late, late, late stages of the game when enclosures comes an issue on the farming economy. We shall see if the Malians allow that to happen. The Malians can be pretty aggressive in the feudal age. They do often have a bit of a tough time to get to the castle age, but we shall see how he manages to face up against the, uh, the English from Divine. Will it be a two town center play from either player? It remains to be seen. Almost reaching that two minute mark. A lot of sheep coming in here, which is very nice for Salami. Um, a lot of other things we've seen recently being done as well, I've seen the Muslim do a couple of times, is go quite heavy on gold and build a mill and actually harvest the cows. The, harvest, the, the harvesting of the cows is a very, very fast food gather rate, so can often be very, very strong. You get, uh, you know, cow is about 100 gold and uh, contains 500 food with a very fast gather speed, so it certainly could be an option here for Salami. We shall see what he opts to decide to do and um, Divine doing standard English things, going for 10 villages on food, 3 on gold. We're getting to that feed age very soon. Um, most likely Council Hall, usually ex expected for the English. Unlikely that we see the Abbey of the Kings, but we shall see as I say that it is the Council Hall. So going to be going up with 4 villages. Maybe looking to get a couple of longbows out, out, out and about to see what the damage they can do. 4 villages there to build the Mansa Quarry for the Malians, which Generates 75 gold per minute and can actually be toggled to stone instead if he so wishes. All right, opting for six houses around the pit mine. And uh, I'll be boosting the amount of gold coming in for sure. Seems to be quite a common occurrence here to go for six houses as per the build. Does have 70 wood in the bank at the moment. Looking to get that lumber camp, I suspect. It's a bit of an awkward spot here on the front here. That could be a, a large focus of attack for the English to uh, to attack into. And it's actually, that's where he's going to put down the lumber camp. It is close to the town centre, so it could potentially have some palisade walls. We shall see. This wood line, of course, very far away from the basin. Certainly expecting the English to be a little bit aggressive early on. Go for a mill and likely to get some wheelbarrow action going on. 150 gold for that wheelbarrow. Has 160 already in the bank. It's... Uh, just does need um uh toggle onto the wrong player. They just need a bit more wood here for Divine, and then he'll be able to afford that wheelbarrow. He needs a couple of villagers to drop off that wood, needs 50 wood. And then he'll be rocking and rolling with that that wheelbarrow. A couple of villagers going onto stone, so it looks like it's gonna be a second town centre. There's a pop opportunity here for the Malians to kind of uh, pressure that, and it's gonna go for an archie range salami. So it's gonna be playing a bit of a heavier feudal age compared to his English counterpart. We shall see if a couple of longbows do pop out though. It doesn't seem like it. Not really affording it in terms of wood. And with this number of villagers on stone, I suspect he's going to invest in a second town centre first here, Divine. So interesting start here for this matchup. Nothing queued up just yet for Salami. Hasn't moved on to stone at all yet. So certainly you'd be looking to play maybe a bit more of an extended feud ledger or an aggressive feud ledger at least. We shall see as he starts to move a villager here towards that second guard for a pit mine, and that will be scouted by Divine. But uh, Divine going for a greedier second town centre build, he can't really pressurise that, can't really deny it at all. And um, that's going to be free gold coming in for Salami Villagers, now going to that wood line there on the north. Wants to get that wood income. Getting wheelbarrow as well as we speak is Divine. There we are. The javelin throwers start to pop out, and uh, this is probably one of the reasons really why Divine didn't really go for that early aggression because the javelin throwers are incredibly strong when they're masked up against the archer line of course and 
not much that Divine can do about them at this stage. Apart from going for cavalry units, but of course that's where the Malians can ex excel as well. You know, going for the Sofa, a cheaper heavy cavalry unit. They can really trade really well against horsemen. Can I go for the Warrior Scout upgrade as well here? Sofa does make its way out onto the field. And there's that 342 stone uh, divine. You might need some more stone. Yep, it's going to mine a couple, a bit more. Javelin throw just uh, being a bit pesky there. Does have enough stone now. Now there's one thing that the English are very good at. And that is defending, of course, with a network of castles bonus. Where will he look to put that second town centre? That's the question. Will it be on that woodland and the berries? But you're going to be going on the front there to protect that stone and just that front access to the base. Not sure how I feel about that, because his opponent could just walk around the back and pressurise the wood. We shall see. Playing a bit more of a condensed economy, bringing that weak villager back home, and that javelin throw is going to be uh, getting a couple of arrows. And as you can see, he can tank it as well. Doing so much damage to the longbows. Look at that. Holy smokes, almost killing that one longbow. Very easily. The Sofa, oh, that's a bit rough there for Salami. Does lose his Warrior Scout as well, so a bit of a miss micro there. Loss of a couple of units there. But it does cause a lot of idle time. Ultimately, he's denying a second town center. And so this is positive for Salami, that's for sure. And looks like Salami's opting for a second town center himself. Has picked up a bit of stone. I'm not sure quite where that villager is picking up the stone. It has 169, that's for sure. And there's that mill. Go for the bear, uh, the deer instead at the moment. I'm curious to see. Where is he getting... Oh, I see. Look at that. He's toggled the Mansa Quarry to stone. I was wondering where he's getting stone from. And it's actually the landmark. And uh, that might actually help him get to that second town centre himself. Try and match up the villager production. Now, he did kill a villager. So, well, so it seems. It might have been an idle time there for Divine. Um, either way, he's a villager behind. An eco unit behind. And there's that mill coming out for Salami. There's no other reason why to build this mill other than getting um, getting cows out there. But he doesn't have the um, Mansa Quarry toggled to gold, so he'll be struggling on the gold to afford those cows. So he's going to be sending those villagers to gold to mine that directly now. It does take a while for the stone to come in, though. Or well, 75 stone per minute. Going to go for another archer range and another stable. Going to be archers or, well, javelin throwers rather and Sofa coming out. As it's a quite hard farming transition for the English, but that's not so much a problem. They do get cheaper farms after all. And it's a very fast gather speed. Getting an outpost on that gold vein wants to protect that position. He needs to keep gold vein safe, and he'll be doing some of that with that with that outpost. Deer harvesting well underway there for Salami and the Malians. Getting wheelbarrow and iron undermesh too. Second stable is up and running. Not actually producing from either though. Doesn't really have the economy to sustain it just yet, but we'll do soon, I'm sure. As a couple of units come out to the east there to see what's happening on the gold vein. You can see the uh, the, cast the network of castles bonus coming in there. All these longbows, the golden hue around them. That's a few longbows, possibly not enough to deal with this though. He's got to be careful, does have villagers garrison inside the outpost though. So the outpost coming in clutch here. A static defense really protecting that gold vein. And not a lot that Salami can do without taking that outpost out first. All right, seems to have really rallied up that stone count. Maybe a cup, just maybe one more minute, and should be able to afford a second town center. Does have the wood for it already? I suspect it will be that second town center. Arrowslitz is now in the outpost, so we need to garrison the villagers inside to do damage. The longbow's heading out. Uh, so I'm need to pay attention. Does lose a unit? The javelin throw of these uh, units are actually unupgraded there for divine, but does manage to pick off a, a, a unit there or two. Second town said to go on the uh, northwest on that deer pack. Be another valuable source of food. I like what I see. Going for siege engineering. So certainly going to be looking to be a bit more aggressive now. Look to take that outpost. Building up the infantry and the sofa there. There we go. It certainly looks like Malians and Salami are going to be playing an extended feud age with the second town center. Getting horticulture from this mill. No cow just yet. But you can see the waypointing of that mill. So I suspect cows will be coming soon. Six villagers on gold. Now, this Mansa Quarry has been toggled back onto gold from what it was on before. Stone. Getting Horticulture and Steel Darrow too. Divine kind of leading the way there for the villager count. 
Longbow's healing themselves up nicely. And uh, here comes the Ram Rush. A couple of Javelin throwers could be building that up. And So this is often what happens with the Malays. They can be very aggressive in the, the Feudal Age, especially against civilizations like the English that kind of thrive on their Longbows. The Javelin archers, the Javelin throwers rather, do really well to counter that. And it's going to be a case where Divine needs to try and defend his position. And well, the English are no slouches in that. Very strong defensively. And that's going to be uh, important here for Divine. I've got it scouted. So he'll see this happening. Malpost gives so much line of vision these days. Just the one round for now. Sending it in on its own. Villagers might pop out actually to try and take that out. We shall see if we, how much he commits to this because there's no arm. Okay, the army is now following him behind. Well, the second town center in for Salami as well. The village account won't be too drastically uh, unbalanced. But there is the White Tower coming out for Divine, going up to the Castle Age with the White Tower to protect the Eco and the two town centres. Not going for the King's Palace, of course, would be pretty greedy to do so. And he recognises that the gold is being denied, though. So the Castle Age uptime, I'm not sure how much that actually helps Divine in this situation, because he doesn't really have safe access to gold. And that's a key issue. Castle Age units often rely on gold access, and he just doesn't really have that right now. And that's what makes this a bit of a concern for Divine. There's that car stage though, a very respectable time, 12 minutes. With a lot of protection there with the White Tower. There's a second round coming out and... Yeah, I just don't know how I feel about this White Tower, the position of it. It helps the protection of the two town centres. And the sheep and perhaps some of the farming economy. The trouble for him is going to struggle access to gold. Uh, and he needs gold for the armoured units to make the car stage really take effect. One thing he can do though is of course upgrade his units. So I suspect we'll see the veterancy for the longbows coming in, hopefully, um, if you can afford it. We'll struggle. It doesn't quite have it. It doesn't have the gold for it. This is where things are going to start to get ugly for the English, as the Suffer heading in, tanking up a lot of the damage coming in from the town centre fire. There is the White Tower as well, so it's got to be careful, taking out farms. Just doing damage, really. That's the key thing for Salami. Only pushing away the villagers off of wood. This is exposed here. The lack of the town centre protection on that wood line now means that Divine is temporarily taken off wood. If we go into the southern wood line, it does have now access on this western gold vein with the outpost there protecting. The javelin throw is just diving underneath the town centres here and the white tower. Not so sure about that. We'll lose a couple on the retreat. Now the armoured units come out. This is what Divine needs really, the access to gold. Then he's got it now. Ram will be going down. A nice early aggression. Did take an outpost or two and cause a bit of idle time. For Rimba, Garrison is the landmark of choice. Or Salami today. This uh, quickly produces barracks and archery range units at, five, units at five at a time. The unit cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. So incredibly strong here for the Malians. They are very heavy on gold now. Understandably so, because of course that's the unit. That's what they're going to be costing from this landmark. Oh, villagers going down on those farms. This is all quite painful. Look at the economy now. 48 for Divine versus 56. And the early aggression here looking very strong for Salami. Now, the question for chat and in the comment section below. Salami, what kind of meat can be made out of it? I think Salami is like a type of cut, right? Like you can have thin strips of meat. Like maybe cows and, and beef. But I don't know. Is Salami a specifically a specific type of meat? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below if you know. I'll probably have to Google that later. I don't eat a lot of salami, but in any case, other than that, the uh, Javelin Throws actually do quite a bit of damage to the Knights, has to be said, considering. Um, but they will be taken out, of course, and Salami does now get to the Castle Age. We should probably see this landmark start pumping out units. It's going to be the Musafadi Warrior. Now, I don't know how, about, how I feel about that. Musafadi Warriors are uh, very strong against armoured units, but they're absolutely hopeless against longbows. And so we'll need to kind of get some suffer out of there as well to try and deal with the longbows. Or maybe some siege, maybe a manganel or two could be helpful. Uh, of course, we'll need a siege workshop in order to do so. He's got a market now to rebalance the economy somewhat. He's looking to get imported armor for the suffer, increasing the armor by plus two. And also wedge rivets, so the suffer will be very, very tanky now, that is for sure. Going to be upgrading the Musafadia to veteran Musafadi will certainly help tank some of the damage coming out from the longbows. But we will see how much damage is able to do. Neither player getting access to the relics just yet. Just a couple of javelin throwers in the north, causing a lot of idle time here. That's not ideal for Divine. He'll clear that up, but uh, those three javelin throwers did a lot of damage just by idle time, and 
Quite extensive walls coming out for Divine here on the east side of the map. That's quite nice because it's going to protect the deer there. It's going to protect the berries, the stone. Uh, quite a lot of economy space to be had here. And that gold will be protected here. So this is a nice bit of expansion. Um, protection here with static defenses for Divine. The trouble for him is he's behind on economy and military numbers as well. As we start to see the software start to build up in numbers and a couple of uh, archers being added into the mix. And in the north, Salami going for this gold mine as well, protecting them with three javelin throwers. This is a concern for Divine. He won't have this scouted out. And uh, this is more gold trickling in for Salami. 41 villages on gold. This Burimba garrison is going to be pumping out units like anything. Look at that. Life coming out on time and I think... Divine might be overrun here very soon. Does have wedge rivets as well, does he actually? That's uh yeah, he does indeed have wedge rivets, so we'll be able to run underneath the town centers pretty pretty nicely. And uh, could he even use stealth. Will we use will we see some stealth here for Salami? Is the army coming forward for the English? Getting an outpost as well, trying to extend the network of castles bonus. Looking to get some raiding value with the knights as they head in. Hasn't really been on the aggressive all that much here, Divine. He's got his opportunity now. Maybe look to take care of that wood line. Uh, he actually decides to go for the army in the fight. I'm not sure how I feel about that. He's running into veteran Musafadi warriors. That is not what the knights want to do. Sure, they're lower numbers, but more of them come in, and those knights are going to absolutely melt. As you can see, they absolutely melt. The longbows will take care of them. This is not really a fight that Salami wants to take, I think. Uh, especially with the amount of kiting that's happening. Look, you can see they really melt. Holy smokes. So a lot of knights were lost, but so many... Musafari Warriors will be going down as well, but this gives an opportunity for the Sofa to jump on this and trap those Longbows on the retreat. The outpost doesn't go up, so no Network of Castles bonus. And uh, Salami looking to seal this one out and just take care of this army. Might want to pull back the Musafari Warriors, which we'll see. Quite happy to let the Sofa do the tanking. Longbows just running back as fast as they can. Aris is coming in that outpost, which is a nice position. Look at that, Salami coming in with a forward keep. And that'll be a very, very strong staging ground to attack. Now the question is, is... Um, is there a way for Divine to stop this? I'm not so sure. The so far, going to focus on the outpost. If the outpost goes down, there's going to be cut off gold in this position. We need to transition to the gold on the back, but he is struggling to hold on here. 17 military versus 32. The Musafari again getting a little bit of value on the knights. They do melt to the archers though, so they're kind of just being rushed in. And yeah, destruction value is looking really good here for Divine. Look at that destruction value on the uh, bottom left. Of the screen almost 6,000, and it's because of just the sheer number of units that Salami has lost, and it's mainly the Musafari, uh, Musafari warriors. But Divine will see this and he would want to try and deny that. Oh, he doesn't see it. Oh my god, I say he will see this, but it's only just out of his vision. And Salami will be he needs to be careful not to reveal this actually. He might just reveal this. Does the Sofa get through and try and deny the outpost? That's actually really key to try and deny that outpost. It gives him more time for the keep to come. He sees it now. Divine will notice it. Will he pounce on it? Will he try to at least? He might head back home. I think he feels like he doesn't have enough and he's probably right. I don't think he does have enough. Oh, look at this. Musafari Warriors coming in the southeast. Maybe looking to use the south act uh, ability. It's going to run into the wood walls though. The Palisades. He won't be able to get through. Might try and just burn them down when the Misfari. Whereas look at the number of Sofa coming out. Back at home, got a lot of stables, three stables. Yeah, Misfari Warrior is going to try and break through. And then if he breaks through and gets in, he could use the stealth ability. That'd be super strong. Now I'm expecting to see maybe a Siege Workshop. Yeah, that is indeed the case. Siege Workshop going right in front of that keep. And then we'll be expecting to see some trebuchets out there. Misfari Warriors do break in. Will we activate the stealth? The longbow is heading that way. Go on, Salami. Use the stealth. You can do it. Oh, they might be cornered in here a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, Mr. Fadi Warriors, they're in trouble. He's going to lose a lot of them. And that's actually really rough. The Mr. Fadi's going to charge in, but I don't think they'll be able to do all that much damage, especially with the kiting. Look at that. They're going to absolutely melt. And it's a nice try, try there by Salami, but didn't quite make it count. And... Those guys are going to be taken out. In fact, the knights don't even need to be here. The fact that the knights are here is a little bit concerning, actually, because if Salami decides to push now, he might do some damage, but he doesn't. In fact, as I say that, he does. So the Sofa are heading forward now. Knights are relatively out of position, but they're pretty fast on their on their feet. They're going to head in that direction. Sofa being pulled away to the north to see if they can get any value here. Checking out the uh, resources. Maybe able to get through. I'm not sure if there's any overchop there. In any case, you should be able to skittle around. And get some value on that wood line. Where are the knights? They're out of position. That is going to be strong here for Salami. Getting the raiding advantage. But it just... They're not even moving. They're not noticing. And now he's going to notice. But it's going to be too late. The veterans are going to kill so many villagers. 
74 and reducing more go down that wood line completely denied nice so heading that position but the damage is done and now he's gonna head on to the farms as well and if the farming economy is idle that's gonna be problematic for divine does have a thousand food in the bank that will hold him for a while but look how many villages he's losing now with this salami can just pull pull away he doesn't need to engage at all he might even take some villages on the retreat on the wood line we shall see no he decides the better of it he wants to keep his army alive and who could blame him as a trebuchet does now come out there for salami Trebuchet coming out for Divine as well. Needs a Springhold really at this point because he needs to deal with that Trebuchet that's coming out for Salami. This second Trebuchet coming out in the mention on the 63 to 33. Salami looking strong with the Malians. And the Malians have been tipped as a, a relatively quote unquote weak civilization, but Salami showing how they're played. He's playing a lot of the Malians and he's clearly enjoying them. Trebuchets are unpacking two to one so far and uh, taking out the. Well, I mean, Salami's just applying, applying pressure at this stage. Now, Salami does have all three sacred sites in his grasp, and that sacred site victory will be approaching, and that gold income coming in will be super, super strong for him. 100 gold per sacred site, 300 gold per minute. And don't forget he's got the Furimba garrison, so he'll be able to produce those units at a gold cost, cost only, and um, that's super, super strong, actually. Go for archers, go for mixed army composition here. 75 military versus 43. You feel like Defiance just waiting and, and massing up for a big, big fight, but... Uh, gonna be struggling here. Now certainly archers will melt to the knights, but if there's any other unit added into the mix by Salami, that will certainly help. Whether it's spears or Musafari warriors, which you'll see is going to be healing up and repairing that keep. Going to be taking down that outpost. You can try to deny the network of castles bonus if you can. And it is indeed now network of city. No, such a network of castles at the moment. I think the network of citadels is in the. Uh, I thought it was in the castle age, but in any case, there's a big fight here. The knights will clear up the archers. Look at that. Musafari warriors coming in the north. They're going to be surrounding the archers and the software as well. Coming in from the north. That is a great play by Salami. He does lose a lot of his archers, though. That's well, a big, big trade to have had. Look at the destruction value. 11,000 there by Divine. Lots of units have been killed. Salami's lost a lot, but a lot of the knights were going down. The Musafari warriors, a huge counter to those knights. And those knights aren't being able to get away. Software chasing them down. It takes another engagement despite the network of castles bonus. Salami doesn't care, he's fighting this, and the archers in behind, the veteran archers can do a bit of damage as well. The soft now can pounce on the longbows, but that's going to be it, that's enough. Divine taps out, and Salami takes his game on Dry Arabia with the Malians. He is looking strong. I hope you guys enjoyed this casted game.